Hello, I'm Jacob Barnett, and I'm here to respond to you with a new video. I haven't posted one of these in a long time, so I just figured, you know, I'd make a new one. So I've had a lot of requests for things on basic calculus or basic algebra. Well, I'm going to focus today on an application of those. I'm going to focus on lasers, laser physics. I'm going to describe how to make some lasers. And I'm just going to give a brief overview of everything, and I'm just going to describe the two level models described by Einstein. Now, also, I'd just like to first note that some of the applications of lasers, they're, they're everywhere. They're in your CDs, they're in, they're in like the supermarket checkout scanner, they are in those surgical procedures that the doctors use, they're everywhere. And, as a sophisticated reader knows, they are also used in compact death ray pistols. However, we haven't experimentally observed this outside of a movie theater, so, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I, let's begin. So, we're going to start with the collection of atoms. And I'm going to send in an electric field. Now you could ask me, why am I sending in an electric field? Well, this is why. Suppose here are two of my states in my atom. One and two. And I put little curly brackets around them. Now, what this field does is it allows you to take the atoms and go up to N2. And then N2 can go, or state 2, can go back down to 1. It can decay. This, in the process, emits a photon. Here's a photon, which I'll call y a gamma, which, I don't know, that looks like a gamma, but that's a gamma. So there's a photon. So by sending in a field, or by optically pumping these, both, uh, these atoms, I can get out some light. So to make this more official, I can have two mirrors. And I can put inside a gain medium, a gain. This thing will have perfect reflectivity, and this thing will have 99% reflectivity. So, here's this. And basically this acts sort of like a cavity. It will hold a frequency of light, and what the gain does is I have some light, and then it grows, and then it goes in, and it goes back out and then it reflects again. And after doing this a whole lot of times, it comes out as one really big light wave, this intensified light wave. Now we could focus on a whole bunch of things. I could focus on some things called spatial hole burning and spectral hole burning. I could focus on putting this little piece of glass in here and what that does to make the laser better. I could, you know, focus on having more levels in here, but I just like to focus on something Einstein had done a while ago, considering that if my atom has just the two levels that I was considering. So, here we have field E and energy W, and let's call the total number of atoms N, and let's say this one has N1 atoms in it, and this is N2. Now, the amount that goes up, this is going to be a constant called BW, a constant B, called the Einstein B coefficient, times W, where W is that energy I was mentioning. If I have more energy, my, I'm going to have more atoms go from 1 to 2. If I have more energy, it's going to go up faster. This thing I'm going to describe by an Einstein A coefficient, A. And similarly, as you can like push a beach ball down at a pool, you can have another term here. This term is extremely important and maybe counterintuitive, as you can probably wonder why adding energy pushes the atom back down. One thing that this does is it ensures Planck's law is held, or it ensures that the black body law is held. So that term is important. So first of all, let's look at the change in these equations. So let's say dn1 dt which this is just fancy for change in N. And 
one, chain and two, TM two, DT. And you want to just get some equations for these things. First of all, notice that these two things have to add up to the total N. So, first of all, that's the first equation. This equation is, well, let's look at the change in N2. N2 will grow, and what we want to happen is we want N2 to grow as much as possible so we can get as much stuff coming down. So, in other words, we want this thing called population inversion. We want to have N2 greater than N1. This is the big goal. So, we want to get these changes. So, if the change in N2, N2 is going to grow if there's a bunch of Ns here through this BW process. So, this is going to be BW, and it's going to be N1. And we're going to have to subtract up N2, because the more atoms that are up here, the more they can push down. And also we have the spontaneous decay. This is called spontaneous. This is called stimular. And minus A N2. Because if there's more N2, it decays more. The N1 dot, or the DN1 DT, is going to be exactly opposite. Just look at the picture upside down. The arrows reverse. So this is B, W, N2, N1, plus A N2. And again, the goal is that. So you can solve these equations, and in the end, you get something like plus two Oh, I'm not even just writing this. This is pretty long. This is the n1 as a function of time. This is the initial n. And these are just all constants. Well, except for this thing. That's time. The t is time. E is Euler's number. It's about 2.7. So this is our formula for n1. And we want to see that if we can get n1, and also we have n2, it's n minus n1. So again, the goal is to try getting n2 larger than n1. So let's see what happens after it's been a very long time. It's been a very long time. This exponential term goes away. So I cancel this. This is n1. So n2 is going to become n times 1 minus a plus bw, a plus 2bw. And then this equals n over a plus 2bw. And then we can multiply this by bw. Or let's just put the BW in the top, because I don't want to write back to parentheses. So there's this. Now, notice one fact. Our A is positive, since we don't just have stuff jumping from 1 to 2. The A has to be positive. And similarly for B, but having D negative just means reversing both of those, and nothing really changes. So anyway, this thing has to be less than or equal to N BW over 2BW, which equals N over 2 which means less than half of the atoms are in the top. That means more than half are in the bottom. So, n over 2, n 2. So this is not what we wanted at all. We get n1 larger or equal n2. That's not what we wanted at all. It's exactly opposite. So this shows us that if we want to make a laser, we can't use just two levels. We need more levels. So, oh wait accomplish this is if you add third line here, you can add state three, say. But this is rather energy consuming, so you want to add a fourth one. And I'm not going to get into the details of how exactly this works out since, you know, I only have 11 minutes. So I'm just going to refer you to a couple of books. Here, let me go get them. Let's see, where did it go? The first one that discusses this sort of thing in a lot of detail is this thing called Laser Physics by Milani and Everly. I like it a lot. And there's also this thing called The Quantum Theory of Light by Lewidin. This one is 
it covers different material than this one, and it's a lot more advanced, but the first couple of chapters discuss this sort of thing. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope this encourages you to learn your algebra and your calculus.